this is where we left off on the last uh, section and what I want to do is to go in in some detail so we're in the small intestines we are uh, we are taking just one section so you have these projections up off the um, off the uh, the the muscular layer um, so the inner layer of the small intestines uh, and we're taking one of those and blowing it up and what I'm looking at and hopefully you're looking at also is the top row of images the middle one the one that kind of looks um, uh, like a finger projection and on that finger projection you have in the middle you have your lacteal which is your uh, lymphatic portion of the uh, small intestines and that's where large fat molecules are going to be absorbed then you have that lacteal surrounded by um, blood vessels this would be both arterial flow and venal flow so so to the uh, uh, to the um, villa and away from the villa it actually is called these are called the villa of this small intestines and then um, on top of the villa, so there's something on top of it, are the microvilla. Those microvilla are the uh, projections off the villa. And so as you move to the right, that purple stained um, image is showing actually a blow up of that blow up where you actually see on the, um, at the very end, you have kind of a, a fuzzy, um, fuzzy, uh, border at the outer uh, portion of this villa and that's that's the micro villa which we call the brush border it's called the brush border because it it will sec it secretes certain enzymes that uh, do some of the final um, cutting apart of molecules and turning them into smaller and smaller as remember this is um, small intestines huge surface area and eventually the products that you ingested are going to become in are going to come into a single uh, unit of whatever whatever particular uh, whether it's carbohydrates fats or proteins so a single unit of that uh, carbohydrates you can think of as a um, monoglyceride uh, a mono um, a mono uh, a single unit of it uh, somehow or another um, complex carbohydrates and then a simple carbohydrate we'll, we'll we'll call it that we think of simple carbohydrates not in layman's terms but as a single uh, glucose six carbon ring single unit of that coming in contact with the br brush border and then also a single unit of protein so an amino acid coming in contact with the brush border and then um, some fats uh, that are so glycerols um, that can be taken into the bloodstream but not mo most fats are going to have to be taken into the uh, um, lymphatic system but they come in contact with this brush border it's where the final I guess the final um, uh, choice I, I don't want to say combat because it's not really combat so the final interaction takes place uh, in this brush border the next image is going to blow that particular villa up even more so here we have another image blow the villa up and then individual cells you find in there many many um, many um, mucus cells so goblet cells because this is a very moist environment needs to stay that way um, and then uh, the first cell at the top is the um, absorptive cell so the cell that actually can take things in uh, at the top of that is the microvilli that have the ability to um, actually secrete the um, the products that are made by this absorptive cell um, and then a goblet cell you have you have an endocrine um, uh, entero endocrine cell so entero meaning um, GI tract uh, endocrine meaning secreting the chemical um, these secrete hormones secretion uh, cholecystokinin or um, gastric inhibitive prote um, uh, gastric inhibitive um, proteinase I believe is what it is but GIP it inhibits the movement of the gastro of the um, GI tract of the uh, stomach sorry uh, and then um, cells that are able to um, secrete lysozymes so so um, something that actually can neutralize and um, kill anything that's made it past the stomach and this far uh, that we don't want to get into your bloodstream 
uh, those are st specialized cells that you have in each villa of the zillions of villas you have in your small intestines. Again, trying to get the story even uh, more in more detail. Uh, and then uh, moving on to where all of this, um, uh, the, the uh, I guess we're moving back out again, uh, back out a little bit, um, back to when the chyme is coming out of the stomach. So here you have actually a blow up of um, a the liver, which we'll talk about, the gallbladder, how that relates to the liver. The gallbladder is the green thing. So the liver, you see that. You have the diaphragm. Uh, the liver sits just um, posterior to the diaphragm. Um, you have your... Um, gallbladder because the gallbladder remember it doesn't make bile but stores it and releases it into the duodenal ampulla so you if you can follow that green line down uh, you can see where that's actually being released you can also uh, see the pancreas that's that long thin we haven't really talked about that yet but we will uh, that yellowish um, uh, long thin um, organ and in the middle of it you have kind of a purplish um, channel and that's the uh, pancreatic duct and its chemicals are released into that duodenal ampulla also. This is the interface between the small intestines and the stomach and what's happening here is all of this is released into this spot to act on uh, the chyme that's coming out of the stomach right away and so think of that interaction of how things are, are very close together there um, and by the way with regard to the um, the the liver uh, we look at the different um, different duct uh, areas you have the right and left hepatic duct you have the uh, common hepatic duct when they get together and then you have the cystic duct and then at the very end, um, when everything gets together, you have the common bile duct. Uh, it does tend to be anatomy that gets asked, at least in lab or um, sometimes in lecture. And then uh, on the uh, right, you have a blow up of all of it uh, where that duct system uh, actually uh, all dumps into the, du the duodenum. Sorry. And then as I said, we do want to talk about the pancreas because the pancreas, uh, the pancreatic fluid, uh, so this is the pancreas acting as an exocrine gland. Um, and uh, the pancreatic fluid uh, is very important with regard to neutralizing the acid that comes out, the acid chyme that comes out, uh, and um, uh, a major part in breaking the the products apart uh, so that they can become the most common or the smallest um, smallest molecule and can be taken into the bloodstream. Uh, you have the pancreas it tends to be a long thin organ um, and so the portion that's closest to the small intestines we call the head, uh, body in the middle and then the tail, uh, the thinner portion, uh, it just is the way it's named. Um, and I, most of the time, many times these things are named by their territory so that if you have a problem with it, that then, uh, uh, and you know, a negative problem like cancer or something, that then can be named by where you find it. Uh, and then on the right, uh, of the upper right, um, that's a, a artist drawing of the different lobes or the different areas of the pancreas so that you can understand how the pancreas can be an endocrine organ and an exocrine. So you have the, the lobes that actually uh, create their product and, and um, have a pathway into the pancreatic duct. Um, that's the uh, exocrine version of the pancreas. And then you have the endocrine cells that are embedded in this um, islet of Langerhans. It's, this image is calling it the pancreatic islets. So they're islands of cells embedded in the exocrine portion. And what they do is they secrete their uh, chemicals, which happens to be insulin and glucagon, straight into the bloodstream. And that's uh, the endocrine system uh, when we talk about that. So that's the pancreas. Um, in terms of regulation of the pancreas and its secretion, I do have a, a, a slide of the um, chemicals secreted by the pancreas, which are numerous. Um, when um, 
you have, of course, uh, prior to this, you have uh, parasympathetic. So you either have CNS innervation uh, via the parasympathetics uh, going along the vagus nerve. So CNS, it's going to stimulate um, pancreatic enzymes. And remember, this started way back when you were starting to look at food and smell food, let alone taste food and have food get into the stomach. So this actually just just picks up uh, from all of that. Uh, and then um, if you have that um, chyme coming from the stomach into the duodenal ampulla, uh, this causes, um, causes uh, um, chemicals, CCK, so cholecystokinin and secretin, uh, to come in to the, uh, to the duodenal ampulla. Um, secretin will stimulate um, pancreatic juice uh, rich in bicarbonate ion. Um, that bicarbonate ion is going to neutralize the acid. And then um, cholecystokinin, which is CCK, stimulates the secretion of um, digestive enzymes. So you have this um, regulation. And then um, activation, again, a reason these images seem to repeat, I guess you might say, is again, uh, I, I'm thinking some of them might communicate better than others to different people. Uh, so then you have, um, you have a, a, the, uh, these are protein, these are enzymes that can act on proteins. So some of them are secreted, they're inactive, and then when they get into the environment of the duodenal ampulla, that environment allows them to become active. So when you have these um, pro-carbopeptidase uh, inactive becoming carbopeptidase, carbo, carbo, um, carbox, carboxypeptidase, boy it's always a mouthful, um, these, then it becomes the active version of this and again um, with, uh, with chymotrypsin uh, inactive becomes active because of the trypsin, um, uh, because of the environment with regard to the, uh, the duodenum. And then, um, and much, much of this activation chemicals come from the brush border. So many of these activation chemicals come from the brush border. So these are chemicals that are released by the epithelial cells um, in, that are found in the um, small intestines and they are released to activate these chemicals. Then um, more regulatory um, information, I guess again, and I, it might actually be probably a very much of a repeat of the first image. Um, just, and maybe putting it, I guess it's a little bit uh, different because it's putting it into the phases of it. Remember we had the phases of the gastric emptying um, and during the cephalic and gastric phases, um, the vagus stimulates and then uh, what happens is chyme coming in, uh, again secretins released release of cholecystokinin, uh, that's CCK, it's actually written out there as opposed to using the abbreviation CCK, cholecystokinin. And then um, enter the bloodstream, and again that can be a feedback um, that those are coming in the, the, the bloodstream, so that can be a feedback to actually um, send to the CNS that we need more stimulation of the pancreas. And upon uh, this stimulation of CNS stimulation to uh, to the pancreas, releasing more of its uh, its pancreatic fluids, and then I think we finally get to the cell where we have a list of the pancreatic fluids. I think there's also a nice chart in your book of the pancreatic fluids, and um, what you have are uh, is um, the epithelial cells. Um, most of your pancreas is epithelial, is, is exocrine clusters. Um, it's going to be fluid and enzymes. And then the islets, as I said, uh, they're going to secrete um, insulin and glucagon. So most of the pancreas, and we need to pick this up on the next, uh, on the next one, next lecture.